Alrighty. What I find really interesting is I wasn't um, doing this, starting to uh, strategize about what to do with the um, the Ninth Army up here in Konigsberg. Originally, I just thought I was going to just shift some strength points over. Uh, well, not originally. Original. Well, that's what I originally wanted to do with them. But what I was uh, trying to figure out here, um, trying to figure out some of that thing I was mentioning with uh, Ken um, and using supply points uh, as uh, like to convert it into reconnaissance, so I can start figuring out like a lot more detail about what's going on with all the Russian uh, troops. Um, and I was thinking, okay, maybe it would be something like uh, you expand one supply point and you're allowed to get um, kind of like in the same way um, defenders can use uh, the train, you know, across uh, the hex and also their adjacent hexes. So I was like, okay, okay, maybe I can say that um, you can expend one uh, supply point and I can find out everything I want to know about this guy, this guy, and this guy, for example. And I've got to have a line of communication uh, to a headquarters kind of thing. Um, and then that shifted me into also looking at how many turns are left for these Russian uh, areas here to finish their trench uh, entrenchment. So that's five more turns, three. So I'm getting a little worried here. Um, and I don't have a ton of strength points here. The majority of my strength points, I think, are going to show up on 03 November when Charles Tortoise and the Garrison Corps are going to uh, release uh, the Festung divisions and uh, brigades. And so what I'm trying to do is, okay, there's going to be a bunch coming here from the Lotsen um, uh, Recombination Center here. I've got to figure out now how can I shift these guys with all these horrible zones of enemy zones of control and the restrictive terrain, shift these guys over. Do I pull an attack off now to at least wedge... Because it's going to get awfully flipping close. By the time I, I have to start trying to bring troops over to here to fill in the, these... I can't start moving all kinds of people and expect to uh, mount an attack, uh, as far as I'm concerned, all in one turn. And everything has to go right. Otherwise, I'm going to have trench... Uh, there's going to be entrenchments uh, sitting there on 05... Uh, that would be 04 November. So I've got to get... So I'm trying to think, should I do one now... This is probably the best one because uh, this guy would only be um, defending in uh, open terrain. So that would be kind of interesting. But then I've stuck my... Well, then I've cut this person off. All right. Th things to think about. But it was just interesting that that's not where I wanted to go. Uh, well, where I did want to go... Well, I have... This little red uh, thing actually is... Um, maybe I'll just keep trying to go here because I was... Did want to do a separate video on the Russian things. And I was like, oh, shoot, maybe i got to do a quickie video here because it's just going to slip my mind. Uh, that thing was um, a successful attack by the Germans. And that's just for me to remind myself I've got to do all the record keeping. Uh, yeah, they eliminated a one strength point uh, Russian regiment there last night. So the Germans have extended. Yeah, I'll just go by towards the Russian area. Um, I am really... It's just fascinating to find out what the hell's going to happen now. I mean, I know it's still early days, and it doesn't mean that the Russians are out of it. But, uh, like I said before, but if, if things really do go bad, and I'm sure there's, um, like I said before, there's got to be politicians and whatnot, or strategists or whatever going, okay, think, like, what happens if things really do fall apart? Uh, like, for, I don't know, what, what are the Russians supposed to do now? What if they lose the initiative uh, in 02 November? Um, you, you know, uh, are you not telling me that the Austrians are going to want to start uh, solidifying all this whole area? And maybe they're going to even start like it's almost like the Gorlitsa Tarnif uh, breakthrough ha uh, started uh, way earlier, in, you know, in this area. I but yet again, the um, the Russians are fantastic up here in East Prussia. Uh, yeah, that it was just completely on a yeah. What a disaster! I once. Uh, once uh, the 10th Army pound, uh, jumped towards Wuj just because a tiny little uh, German force was out there trying to convert rail towards Wuj. And uh, they got caught with their pants down. Well, no supply as well. Um, so anyways, that's it. I've got to do a bit of record keeping there. Uh, most of the mov movements are done there. I don't think I'm doing anything left in the Warsaw front. Uh, this thing here is interesting. 
like I've got these two little arrows. I don't have any supply uh, for an attack there, but I'm thinking, hmm, there's a possibility I could move at, le at least move my troops over. It doesn't mean I have to attack, but if I can just at least move my troops across the border, I've killed their river bonus and uh, potentially uh, popped in some enemy zones to control issues for them to retreat because uh, look how flipping close the Germans are uh, to, to Kielce and ride them. That was, uh, that was to me, a bonus. Uh, I, that was kind of like, if that happens by Christmas or whatever, like, you know, uh, the turn into 1915, I would have been like, are you kidding me? Uh, so this is, you know, yet again, ahead of, ahead of schedule. So the Russians, I'm assuming, are going to have to fall back and are certainly going to have to fall. Like, what do they do then here? If I do, uh, that's a good idea. Just move in. Don't attack. And yeah, smart move, dude. I think. Um, things are, it's weird. That's all I got to say. In some way, like I go over to here. And I'm like, okay, you're doing great, Russia. And then over here, it's like, oh my gosh. Um, where do you fall back to? You got to protect your lines. Um, and just realize there's, a, uh, well, all of Austria, everything. Yeah, there's nothing. You're not going to be um, hanging out in Austria hungry by... Um, January, as far as I'm concerned, and basically all of Poland is gone. Uh, well, you still have Warsaw. <sighs> so I guess it'll be all the way down to probably the Vistula, and then along the, the Virps, I guess, and then uh, the Sand, forget that. Um, maybe, maybe, no, because the Sand's there. We'll try to stick there, and then along the, uh, along the Boog. And that's it. And but I mean, you know what? If like, what happens if Austria Hungary goes uh, and and Germany goes? You know what? Things are really, really going well. We're going to start planning for a spring offensive here and see if we can get uh, Proskurov and whatnot. And that means I have to start worrying about what the hell's going on with Romania and everything else later on. <sighs> oh boy! And then I've even started reading the freaking. Um, resource rules and everything else about uh, you know in the grand campaign trying to even implement that and like i said and then i've got i'm uh i'm biting at the bit to start adding um like just all the narrative stuff uh, i want to really get into um oh that was the thing i keep forgetting to mention last night with the the live stream i kept getting sidetracked about the Borevich thing so i'd love to do a little uh segment with uh about Borevich because i love him to bits but and he's called the lion of the asanzo but I want to find out, and I want to be a bit critical. I want to look at all his battles um, that he did, because as far as I know, he was primarily a defensive. Um, okay, maybe that's like okay, that's <clears throat> excuse me, that's because that's the situation he he was in. But I'm thinking, is should he really be called the lion of the of the Asanzo? Should it, maybe he should be called the elephant of the Asanzo? Like he just couldn't budge him or something? I don't know. I'm just trying to think, like maybe. Yeah, I just want to get a bit more, uh, why not? Let's get a bit, uh, that's the thing, what you do sometimes. I mean, I love this thing, and I've been poking at it like there's no tomorrow. All right, see you later.